Welcome to the Lemon Tube Amiga Workbench Guides. This video was made possible by our sponsors on Patreon. If you'd like to support these videos, why not check out our Lemon Tube Amiga Club subscription page, where you'll find all the latest perks and freebies. Now that we've set up Workbench, the very next thing to do is to check out our new configuration. You can see our PC drives are still in the bottom and we may need those a bit later on. But for now, let's just check out our new Workbench and give you a guided tour of Workbench. If you haven't seen Workbench 3.1 before, this is what you get. A load of directories known as drawers and they appear in a window that you can resize by clicking on the triangle in the bottom corner you can also scroll that around so you can have that window however big you want and you can see that scroll bars will appear when you move that outside of that scroll window so this was invented before windows originally about 1985 so you can see it has the same drag and drop interface that you might be familiar with modern windows and you can simply click on those with the mouse, left click on those and drag those, drop them to wherever you want to go. And as soon as you click on a new one, that will now be selected. So now that we've got all these icons in the correct position, the drawers where we want them and the window in the correct position, then we can freeze those into place. You can see we can also minimize windows as well using the minimize option and we can push that to the back or bring that to the forwards as well with this button so that we can always know which window is in front just click on that one and of course the resize and it tells you how much is full as well in that particular directory so according to this well it's an expandable pc hard drive it'll expand with us so it's saying it's 71 percent full but that will expand and if you hold down the right mouse button it will bring down some pull down menus from the top of the screen and using the arrow and holding that right mouse button down we can then release that over a subject and by highlighting these and pressing snapshot that will lock those icons into place so that whenever we load that window that will load up the icons wherever we put them and we can snapshot the icons individually using the icons menu so that we can place those in the window and so this is our workbench and these are the pull down menus you can see we can turn on and off the backdrop from here we can execute a command as well which means that we can execute something in the command line interface which we'll definitely be coming back to later on the command line interface is where we can access most of the commands and the rest of them are in the pull down menus you can see we can redraw all and that's simply redraw on everything and well not quite sure what that does and update all as well will update everything on the screen so let's see what that's done it will memorize our last known position as well on that's scroll window so if you scroll down to a certain point to look at something at a certain point it will open again at that point without us having to save the window but let's just snapshot those icons anyway so that we're now comfortable with our new workbench so what else can we do let's see last message that will pop up the last error message on the screen we can't see any of those about it's saying that we've got 3.1 rom installed and workbench 3.1 which is version 40 which is highly confusing for newbies and we can also quit i'm not quite sure what that does because the only thing that we need to do to quit is to switch off the emulator so in the window options we can have a new drawer which comes in handy and we'll definitely be making new drawers a bit later on we can open up the parent of whatever that drawer is so maybe if we open up the tools and we open up the parent that will open up the workbench that's the drawer that that came from and when i'm saying drawer i mean basically window so that means you can always open up the previous window if you get lost which is a very good feature and it means that it's basically a back button so we can see that in the window we can also clean up the window which cleans up all of the icons that you can see on the screen and that will present them nicely spaced out so that we can change the window and having cleaned up we can change that 
So any window that we prefer and so that have those nicely laid out however we want them. So let's just have this option for now. Let's put the window wherever we want it. And we can also snapshot here either the window or everything. So let's snapshot the window. Let's see if that works. And yes, it seems to have locked everything exactly where we put it. Slightly overlapping the previous window or the previous screen so that we can get back to that and we can also highlight all which is a great feature and um, we can snapshot all and update all which will update all of the icons on the screen and redraw them all over again we can also show all of the hidden files as well from this menu so all of the hidden system files that we've managed to put into the tools drawer or the tools directory in this case will be highlighted by showing all of those files and we can also view by different things as well, just in case you thought that we couldn't list this out in text. Yes, you can. You can see the file size in those places and you can see the protection bits as well. It's read, write, editable and deletable, RWED. And we can see the date that that was last created and the time as well. So we can view by the icons if we want, the name or the date. So we don't have a date reshuffle, but we can resize those and see those by date. Um, what else? We can snapshot all, so that when we close this window and open it up again, of course, it will only show that. And that really comes in handy if you've got lots and lots and lots of files. You can list maybe 20 of those on the screen, and that takes up less room, hopefully, than loads of icons. But for now, we've only got maybe half a dozen that we really need to take care of so we're going to snapshot that window and hopefully again that will snapshot everything into place so in the icons menu we can open the icon by double clicking that or selecting open we can copy that icon copy the file we can rename that file as hd backup we can select information on that file where we can select the tool types and we can also change the parameters as well we can change that into a script from here we can change the memory stack which isn't really important and we can add a comment on that as well to tell us what it is and it's got all of the file properties which you can usually find on windows even today we can change the screen modes as well and all the extra properties that you might want to change in the application we don't have to go into the application itself we can simply change everything before we even run it and these things you can find out in the documentation what every single one of these does it's in brackets that means it's not going to be activated if you want to click on those it will pop up and then you remove those brackets to activate that and that's known as a tool type and i've no idea why it's called a tool type you can see we're changing the minimum colors the number of colors into eight and we can get rid of those brackets and that means that the number of colors will now be eight as standard if we run that tool type even though we're only running a four color workbench at the moment so you can see this is an application that we can run it's a hd backup tool and i created my own hd backup tool back in the day using scripts so that really comes in handy if you want to back everything up we can also see a graphics dump which will dump text onto a printer as far as i know and we can also see the standard calculator obviously every operating system came with a calculator and icon editor which really needs a video on its own from here we can change the icons which are associated with those applications or those directories so we can open up any of the icons which are associated with those you can see commodities is a drawer at the bottom that will have its own icon maybe not all of these have their own icons but most of those that refer to drawers in this case will have an info file and that tells us what that looks like in this case this is what appears on workbench it's the prefs file and so when we double click on the prefs drawer it will pop up with this icon so from this we can change this icon and change the look of this you can see selected and non-selected on the right so in the selected icon or the normal icon that's now blue and we can undo that by one step so you can't undo it all so it only has one step undo in this particular feature unfortunately 
which is something you'll definitely have to get used to if you're going to use the very basic icon editor which came with workbench and you can see if we save that icon that will save the icon and so the unclick prefs icon now has a blue question mark on the front of it but we didn't change the selected icon so the selected one will be as it was we can also cut copy and paste we can change the drawer type from this the application type so we can save it as an application as a drawer and as a range of other things as well maybe as a script as well and you can see that we can basically edit with a very basic editing package the functions of the icon editor which by workbench 3 you would have expected something that looked like dpaint but unfortunately not and so every drawer and every application will have some kind of an icon that is visible on workbench and if it doesn't it will be an invisible file that you can only see by selecting show all icons so you can see we've messed around with this we can even move that icon around but that will chop off unfortunately the pixels that go off the screen so we can move the placement around and we can draw that nice and big and we can have icons that are massive not that you can edit those in this very basic icon editor but you can see it is possible to update those and it's very fun to update sometimes every single icon that appears and you can update every single icon if it has a .info file that's basically the icon you click on that and it's the very same .info file that we looked at earlier on when we looked at the system properties and the info when you go up to the top menu and click information it will show us the icon as well as all the information so you can see that we've loaded up the disk the workbench drive that we're using at the moment which is hopefully dh1 and the files is dh0 so you can see that we can change the actual disk icon that we're using and you can edit that and change that and move that around in the same fashion as all the other icons that we can have and in a later video I'll be running through extra coloured icons and installing multi-coloured icons so that we can update this workbench and we don't need to use this very feeble icon editor at the moment this is live commentary over footage that I recorded quite some time ago so this is me creating what looks like an A which looks more like an R to me so the Amiga A is supposed to be inverted but I've actually got the slant in the wrong direction it's supposed to have a slant to the right and I've made it to the left but anyway so you can even erase the whole icon if you want to do that and again change the icon from a project a disc or a drawer we're actually editing the disc icon at the moment change that to a tool if we want that project to run as a tool and if it's a drawer it'll try to open it as a window so you have to make sure that the icon file type is correct in every case and we've got that very feeble color palette we're only using four color workbench so only four colors will appear in the icon editor and a bit later on when we increase the colors that will make sure that more colors appear in the icon editor the workbench can only handle eight colors as standard without it being juddery and slow and all the rest of it so basically they didn't code more than eight colors into the icon editor but later on we'll be looking at 16 colors and things like that so that's the icon editor there's also the hd install tools or the hd toolbox or the hard drive preparation tool whatever you want to call that and cmd i can't remember what that is but that's looking like a parallel port so maybe it's some kind of external command some kind of parallel port driver i'm not quite sure off the top of my head in here are the commodities and these are applications which run on top of workbench which makes life a bit easier exchange makes sure that we can see those and switch those on and off at the moment only the exchange commodity is running so only that one will appear so the screen blanker is another commodity that you don't have to have switched on that will blank the screen of course cross dos will make sure that we can access 720k pc floppy drives and click to front means we can double click on windows to click them to the front of the screen 
and that's handy if you want to double click on windows and make them instantly appear you don't have to have these commodities running in the background these are just extra tools that you can run and you can run those all you can see those appearing in the exchange commodity tool which you can minimize so you can always have those on you don't really need any of those on and you don't need the exchange on either it's just something else that they added to workbench and you can definitely find more commodities on the Eminet and tons and tons more commodities so that you can tweak your Amiga workbench setup so now that we've got all those we've switched all those off unfortunately so let's have a look that's the tools and in the devs we can see some more drawers and that means that there are more things to investigate in here more directories so we probably won't cover most of those but the devices are things that are connected to our Amiga and we can also run data types from that which means we can see pictures so we can run the clock tool which gives us a basic clock and multi view means we can view pictures and text files as well using the multi view option so we just have to go into wherever they are and click on them and it will open them up and it will print those onto the screen so you can view those in whatever format they are and that will depend on whichever data types you've got running in the devs drawer so in the storage we've got even more data types and DOS drivers and DOS drivers are things which are connected to the workbench the WB startup is anything that you want to start up from the beginning as it boots up um, we'll be moving back to that and in the prefs directory which again maybe we'll look at a few of these prefs this is the most important drawer this contains all the applications for changing the preferences you can see the font that we're using is Topaz 8 at the moment which is the standard workbench font it means it's nice and clear you can read that nice and clear on LCD screen local changes the location of your workbench at the moment we're running English and it prints a nice map of everywhere on the planet and you can see where you are on the planet as you're clicking on your time zone you can see we change our time zone to GMT which hopefully changes according to daylight saving time and so the pointer prefs is another basic icon tool where we can basically edit the pointer that you can see floating around at the moment it's a huge big pointer at the moment we'll definitely be making that smaller a bit later and the printer pfs printer preferences we don't need to look at that and the sound preferences what will happen it will beep 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 if anything goes wrong it will flash the display and make sound so uh, in the eye control panel we can look at keyboard shortcuts if we hold down certain keys and press certain key combinations that will make things appear and you might have noticed on the pull down menus those also have key combinations next to those so you can actively use those and I'm not actually using that I'm using the pull down tool which means that we can pull down the screen window if we have a window behind workbench you can see we can avoid flicker which is a neat tool if you have a high workbench DPI you can avoid the screen flickering in interlace mode and overscan prefs means that we can make the workbench bigger and on a normal CRTV this really did meant that we can make the screen as big as the screen on your CRT TV you change the graphics and the text in that mode and automatic screen scaling means it automatically screen scales it for us in win uae so you can see we're running a nice big pal screen width so it can fit more on it and print prefs again i'm not too bothered about that and the screen mode changes the screen mode of course high resolution lower resolution or super 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 high resolution which is too super for most people but we're running an amiga 1200 here so let's check out the screen modes using the amiga 1200 and the no flicker mode it means we can get tons of things on the screen so if you're used to a huge big pc screen mode you can have that but this is something that i prefer high res mode using tons and tons of colors and using this aga setup it doesn't really slow things down because we've selected i think fastest possible mode in the preferences so input preferences are for mouse and things like that and we can also select the palette tool from here where we can 
select the screen palette you might notice that the first four colors are the ones for the icons and the windows background so as soon as we change those in the palette prefs that will automatically change those everywhere on workbench so we can change the colors which mainly appear on the icons and background you can see we're using that that will automatically mess up everything that we've got going on in workbench so you have to be careful changing things with the palette tool you can see we can increase all the rgb values all the way up and all the way down and yes we've successfully managed to completely ruin everything so let's change it back to the standard four color multicolor setup to get back to those and restore everything as much as we can hopefully there are a few presets as well if you want to change those to magic workbench style presets and you can change those all to your heart's desire they look pretty formidable to me but i would say that that's a polite word of saying it and they didn't really go to town unfortunately commodore in their wisdom didn't really give us an interface which was absolutely phenomenal but what they did do is provide the very basic tools and the very basic tools are available to us on workbench so let's go back to the four color mode printer gfx that's for printer modes that have print high color graphics and board rate serial if you want to connect two amigas together and the workbench pattern preferences from here we can change the background not only of the background itself but also the window background as well per window so you can have every drawer that opens with its own window backdrop and those are very basic in four colors you can see we've got eight colors in there now because well we ended up being in eight color mode so you can see that we can draw things with multicolors and we can have those tested into the background we don't have to save those we can see what that looks like that actually looks pretty groovy but we're actually going to lose that right now forever and so we can change the pattern or the picture in the background at this point and the workbench or the windows so we can change those i think every single window has its own workbench pattern in the background I'm not quite sure but at least that was a start and Commodore did try to do something that was a bit different and wasn't just the boring interface that we got with the Windows 3.1 and on the Apple Mac so this is our workbench let's check out the system drawer or the system directory whatever you like to call that it's the same thing it has its own icon and contains icons within it so let's clean up those icons and reset workbench you not really know well it redraws everything on the screen you don't really need to know about that the IntelliFont won't work because if you remember we didn't install any fonts during the install list it's going to complain about that so I might return to that later on and fix fonts uh, no idea what that does but no fast mem gets rid of the fast memory um, Fixed fonts is the end something to do with the fonts that you can have in Workbench and during your applications you can have those scalable fonts. You can format every single disk and every single drive that's connected to your Amiga. It will say how big it is and you can see that all of our PC drives are connected. Uh, A-Rex is a console which runs on top of the Amiga. It's kind of a souped up command line interface and the original command line interface is known as CLI or Amiga Shell and that's what we're going to be moving into in the next part of this guide. Mm -hmm.